Gustavo Fring is possibly one of the most ruthless characters in the Breaking Bad trilogy. Don Elalio, Don Paco, Cesar, Reynaldo, Fortuno, all dead. Yet contrastingly, he could turn into a professional and well-conducted businessman hidden in plain sight. A serial entrepreneur owning a highly successful restaurant chain, as well as an industrial laundry facility. On the outside maintaining this positive image, making large donations to the office's charitable events. Despite being a member of the hospital board, he owns one of the largest drug operations which leads to unimaginable consequences to many other people. Being in a position of power, he has to deal with many rivals and issues, and despite being a calculated and concise professional, he does make crucial mistakes that triggers his downfall. Yeah, I kept him alive, kept him broken. I was saving to the last. Before he dies, he will know I buried every one of you. This is the tragic character arc of Gustavo Fring. There's not much to Gustavo's background, however before the events of Better Call Saul, we know he begins to establish his chain of restaurants alongside his business partner and lover, Max. They also begin to endorse in the methamphetamine business as Max was a chemist, they would begin developing a formula for it. The two would then approach Don Eladio, the cartel leader who had access to the distribution chain, but things didn't go to plan. After Eladio had felt disrespected, he would order Hector Salamanca to shoot Max in the head. Gustavo watching his business partner get shot would translate to a long time rivalry with Hector and Don Eladio. But for now he moves on, immigrating to the United States and expanding his restaurant chain. Upon networking with other people in the US, Gus eventually became a meth distributor for the cartel. Whilst working, he would secretly plot revenge on Hector, Eladio and Bolsa, not only for Max but to eliminate his dependence on the cartel, as he would soon have bigger plans on becoming his own boss and owning his own cartel one day. Which now leads to Better Call Saul, where we are first introduced to Gustavo. Gustavo would find and hire a former associate with the Salamanca cartel, Mike, a former police officer private investigator and now hitman. After falling out with the Salamanca cartel, Gustavo and Mike have similar interest in taking out Hector, but in the last moments Gustavo stops Mike and that he wanted to be the one to personally end Hector at a later time and date. But this would be Gustavo's first mistake, his hatred and despise of Hector. He allowed his anger and revenge for Max to overcome the best decision for him, which was to eliminate his arch enemy right there and then. Rather, he wanted him to suffer slowly, which is why he encourages Mike to set a hit on one of Hector's trucks. When the drugs are detected by a police dog, the drivers are arrested and police closed off Hector's main smuggling route, which heavily jeopardises their business. Hector is left with no choice but to use Gustavo's distribution network, which ultimately leads to an angry Hector. And to make matters worse for Hector, his employee, Nacho, would replace his medication pills, leading to Hector suffering a stroke. Whilst he deals with the cartel, he plans on forming his own empire and hires Gayu, a chemist he used to set up his underground meth lab, an innocent man who followed the orders given to him. Gustavo saw this and exploited him, and he knew the very moment he brought him in the game, his life was at risk. He also hired Werner, an engineer who designed the super lab, another innocent life who was used to build Gustavo's vision 
On the other side of the business, Gustavo meets Lalo Salamanca, where he proposes the idea of forming an alliance against Eladio, but Gustavo declines. Really? Still, if we were to get along too well, I'm sure Eladio wouldn't like that, would he? I am satisfied with the current arrangement. He later arranges for Nacho, who is still trusted in the Salamanca cartel, to take the inferior product rather than the good, to put a bad reputation upon the Salamanca name. Lalo finds out and meets with Gus and Juan, where Gus would lie and say it was Werner who had stolen some product and replaced it with local methamphetamine. When I discovered what Ziegler had done, I replaced the stolen product with methamphetamine I purchased locally. Some of this inferior product went to your organization. I must apologize. Lalo accepts the mistake but remains suspicious, as things would escalate after one of Lalo's men, Domingo, is arrested and gives information regarding Gus's meeting points. Nacho reports to Gustavo about the DEA knowing the location of his dead drops, but he continues to pursue them as if he had cancelled them, Lalo would figure there would be an informant within the business, putting Nacho at risk. Um, if there's no money in those dead drops, Lalo will know someone talked. The dead drops remain. Later, Gustavo would get Mike to assist the police in arresting Lalo for the murder of Fred. Whilst in prison, Lalo contacts Nacho from jail and says he wants Nacho to burn down Gus's restaurant. To not expose Nacho as a mole in the Salamanca group, Gus allows one of his restaurants to get burnt. Whilst this, he gets his criminal lawyer, Jimmy, to release Lalo on bail. He releases Lalo to permanently get rid of him, so Gustavo releases him and sets him up. However, we find out Lalo survives, putting not only Gustavo's life at risk, but Nacho's too, as Lalo now knows that they were the ones that betrayed him. Nacho, if caught by the cartel, could be a massive liability, leaking any information about Gustavo. Nacho accepts his fate was to come and agrees to take the blame, saying he worked for another cartel to protect Gus. But despite avoiding conflict between Salamanca and the cartel, Lalo is still alive, constantly putting fear in Gustavo. We can begin to see Gustavo's OCD translating into his aspect of both businesses, obsessively cleaning his restaurants to remain occupied, whilst covering any possible mistakes with the cartel and Lalo. Eventually Gustavo and Lalo both have a shootout and Lalo is killed, which causes trouble as Lalo is one of the nephews of Hector the arch enemy of Gustavo. Eladio, as the acting boss of both Hector and Gustavo, settles the ground by giving the South Valley back to Salamanca and the North Valley for Gus. The South Valley seguirá siendo de los Salamanca. Y el resto del norte será tuyo. Trabajando para Bolsa. In Breaking Bad, Gustavo meets Walter and Jesse through Jimmy. However, due to Jesse's lack of professional conduct, Gustavo is not so impressed and avoids dealing business with them. But a persistent Walter would later go into the restaurant alone, realizing that Gustavo was the manager and distributor he was looking for. Walter utilizes his quality of product and manages to sell 38 pounds of product for 1.2 million dollars. Whilst being a mass distributor of drugs on one side, he is sponsoring a DEA charity event hiding in plain sight. His OCD appears to be driving him to extents unnecessary, as he doesn't need to go this far. It's arguable that his OCD behaviour led him to building a strong foundation of both his restaurant's business and his super lab minimizing any risk or mistakes. But because of these obsessive traits, it's also caused multiple innocent lives and guilty lives to be taken. After their first deal, Gustavo realizes Walter's product is superior and sees him as an asset to his upcoming super lab. 
He offers him $3 million for three months worth of cooking. However, after the plane incident and family issues, Walter no longer wants to pursue his criminal career. But after some convincing, Walter would end up cooking for him with Gail being his assistant cook. Shortly after, Walter suspects Gail is only there to replace him. And when he does so, Gus will have him killed. So Walter has Jesse kill Gail in desperation. With Gail dead, Gustavo is now left with no choice but for Walter and Jess to be his cooks. The only issue is Gail was obedient and easily manipulated, but Walter and Jesse are unpredictable and unreliable. Shortly the pair realise that Gustavo was ruthless and sooner or later he would just replace Jesse and Walter again, as they were a liability, so they planned on eliminating Gus. As well as this, Hank is beginning to grow suspicious of Gustavo as his fingerprints were found at the crime scene of Gail's death. In addition, he wasn't able to find any prior records of him in Chile. Meanwhile, Gustavo, Mike and Jesse go to Mexico, where he shows the cartel how to cook Walter's recipe. Celebrating, Gustavo offers tequila to the whole cartel. Salud! Salud! which happened to be poison, eliminating his dependence on the cartel and any superiors above Gustavo. Gustavo was now his own boss with no restrictions. He's left with a few minor issues like Walter, where he tells him to stay away from Jesse but doesn't kill him due to Jesse's loyalty to him. Gustavo goes as far as exposing his plan on killing Hank due to the DEA's active investigation on him. With Walter feeling betrayed and angered, he proposes a deal with Hector where they expect Gustavo to visit and kill him. But before doing so, Hector would have a bomb planted underneath his chair to end both his own suffering and Gustavo's. And of course, Gustavo being a perfectionist he is, he visits Hector himself with the burning desire to avenge Max. which then leads to a massive explosion, killing both of them. After 20 years of success building an intricate empire, he finally had become the man he so badly desired, owning the biggest drug operation in America. But the moment he does so, the perfectionist we saw for the past 20 years made the final mistake of avenging Max himself, allowing his emotions to cloud his judgement Usually, Gustavo would have someone do the killing for him, like Mike or Tyrus, but his uncontrollable desire to avenge Max led to his ultimate downfall. Which also leads me to the next point of underestimating Walter White. Gustavo initially saw Walter as a chemist and underestimated his intelligence, resourcefulness and determination. With Walter's innocent act and persona, he would sliver his way out of death and eventually he would manage to capitalise on one of Gus's few flaws, which was his uncontrollable desire to kill Hector himself. It's also arguable that trusting Jesse Pinkman was another mistake to his downfall. Gustavo believed he could manipulate and control Jesse for his own benefit. He saw Jesse as if he was Gail and thought he had utter control over him, but Jesse's loyalty to Walter and his unpredictability was a massive vulnerability for Gustavo. You wanna, you wanna talk like men? Let's talk like men. You kill Mr. White, you're gonna have to kill me too. As this prevented Walter from multiple assassinations. And that is a wrap for Gustavo's tragic character arc. A perfectionist who made mistakes. A man who sponsored the DEA yet owning the biggest drug operation in America. A kind and respectful man who was also ruthless and emotionless. Thanks for watching.